Hello and welcome to the February 13th edition of the Gold Goats and Gun Short News. My name is Tom Luongo. We've got a lot to talk about, and today I want to talk about Brexit. But before we do so, a little housekeeping. So we do live streams every Monday night at 8 p.m. and every Friday night at 8.30. We're up to over 2,000 people here on the channel. Our chats are usually between 65 and 80 people now. This is really cool. It's great. We also um, uh, live stream uh, simulcast over Periscope as well. So if you uh, you want to find me on Periscope, you can do that as well. Um, you can follow my work over at goldgoatsandguns.com. You can also uh, support my work through Patreon at Patreon slash goldgoatsandguns. But hey, uh, the live streams are great. We do about 15 to 20 minutes worth of opening remarks, and then I open it up for questions, and we cover pretty much everything. Um, geopolitics, economics, the events of the day, culture, movies, how that all ties into philosophy and politics and all of it. So uh, I'm open to discussing whatever you want because ultimately the live stream is going to be your conversation. So let's get on to Brexit because the conversation about Brexit took a very interesting turn yesterday. So the e um, the EU, the UK's chief negotiator, Ollie Robbins, was overheard in a bar by an ITV reporter. Oh, I'm surprised. Why am I shocked by this? That there would be a leak that would throw Brexit into turmoil. Um, I'm not sure how much credence I put on this overhearing or this leak or anything like that i almost think that robbins wanted this out in the open because robbins is has been probably the most controversial figure from my perspective in the entire thing and it's not really controversial unless you're you know a hard brexiteer uh he's pretty much a remainer he re, he exists as the he's the guy who put the deal together he exists as the main um uh, will of the UK bureaucracy that does not want any change, that loves the current situation with the EU, that that wants to keep their jobs and keep the gravy train up from their end flowing. This is the kind of classic of deep state argument that the bureaucracy, the permanent bureaucracy, uh, tends to favor policy inertia. It doesn't like change. At the same time, we have uh, Theresa May, who was a Remainer before uh, she became prime minister. So we're looking at a situation here where there's real worry about there being a Brexit in name only. Now, Theresa May's deal uh, is that. And Robbins was overheard saying that if Parliament doesn't vote for her deal, there would be a lengthy extension to Article 50, up to 21 months, which would be uh, insane. And spoken like a true bureaucrat, that's the way he's thinking, that it could we could get an extension from the EU up to 21 months. The problem is, is that from what I understand, the British people will not stand for that. And this is what Theresa May has been categorically stating over and over and over again, that the, um, Europe, uh, that the UK will leave the European Union on March the 29th, come hell or high water, deal or no deal. She would prefer a deal. And the only deal that's been put forth has been the EU's. Now she's asked for an extension because there seems to be a little bit of movement on the part of the EU in terms of negotiating. Um, many people have just taken that to be, oh, she's just trying to run out the clock so that to force us to accept her deal because she, they, she knows that we don't want a no deal. There's so many, there's, you know, the one thing that parliament is mostly in favor of is not leaving the, the EU on WTO terms, which of course is what most Brexiteers actually want. And most people who are, who, um, who are willing to back Brexit, even if they voted remain, feel that that's probably the best way of going about this at this point because they have become fed up with the EU's lack of negotiating tactics um, and their bullying and everything else. And so at this point, the relationship between the UK and the EU is soured at a, at a person, you know, at a personal level. And there's no amount of bureaucratic inertia that's going to stop that. Tony Blair can tell Angela Merkel there's going to be a second referendum all he wants, but it's not really going to change the dynamic that's that's beginning the groundswell that is pretty obviously growing um, against the EU because of the way they've handled these negotiations, which is to say horribly and dismissively. And every time someone like Donald Tusk opens his mouth and says there's a special place in hell for Brexiteers, it just hardens uh, opposition to the EU even that much more because, again, nothing, um, nothing unites people more than a foreign actor pressuring them to do something regardless of whether it's in their best interest or not. So like the one can make the credible argument that Obama is saying that, well, you guys would go back to the 
to the back of the queue for a trade deal if you vote for Brexit. Um, probably pretty much secured Brexit. It certainly probably got another, you know, half a million people to the polls that day to just say, no, no the heck with this. This is wrong. So, and you got to remember that the EU can't negotiate. And this is part of the reason why Jeremy Corbyn and the Remainers and the rest of them are saying, look, Theresa May, no matter how much time you ask for, they're not going to come to you uh, in negotiations because they can't. Because any weakness that the EU shows, if they acknowledge the fact that there's even negotiations going on, puts them in a very ugly position. They've always treated their member states this way. These are people you are, you are negotiating with people who are not elected. You are, you are dealing with people who feel n no amount of, of uh, pressure from losing their jobs for doing a bad job. They are the ultimate in unelected, uninterested, disinterested bureaucracy. They are the face of a faceless technocracy that the EU was founded upon. It was interesting that yesterday George Soros came out and um, posed an op-ed or uh, posted an op-ed which said, you know, look, if the European Union doesn't wake up, if Europeans don't wake up, the EU is going to go the way of the USSR. Well, you know, since they were both organized along the same lines, why should he be shocked by this? So to me, I'm watching May play this out. And to me, it just looks like she's got all the leverage in the world. She's got the leverage over the remainers, which she's been using for months now. And just brilliantly, I, I mean, I'm, I don't like Theresa May, but I have to respect how she's handled the remainers and has all the leverage to get exactly what she wants, which is, and, I, and the, the, the big question though is, what does she want? Does she want to remain in the EU? Well, if so, then why are the remainers so upset about her deal? And the Irish backstop is not something that should be that important to them. If they're willing, if many of them now are willing to split off from their parent parties, from the Tories and the Labour getting together, those guys getting together to form a new anti-Brexit party, for lack of a better term, to to get the uh, to get the EU to get the UK to stay in the EU. Theresa May is all but negotiated Brexit in name only. So why are they so upset with it? That's the big question. And the question, of course, the question is, is because the British people don't want Brexit in name only. The British people want a hard Brexit. It's the politicians that don't want it, but they also don't want to lose their jobs. So they want to deliver Brexit in name only, but blame everybody else for betraying the people. That's the typical political strategy here. That's exactly what's going on with the border wall in the United States. It's, it's the same thing that it's always played out at every level when the political process is as corrupt and venal as it is. And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a whole bunch of people who don't actually want to leave, but don't want to look like they don't want to leave. Everybody wants to put up, wants to put up the brave face of the British people. Well, we did the best we could. And Theresa May is no different than anybody else. So the real question is, who is she working for? And to me, all of this worry about her trying to run out the deal to run out the clock to force us to accept her rotten deal and and force and and is now trying to force the remainers to split off and form a different party to me all screams the fact that they've already made their peace with the fact that there's going to be a hard brexit and that Theresa may's already made her choice and that even ollie robbins is now trying to tie her hands in the same way that john bolton tries to tie donald trump's hands by um by either pre-announcing a policy change that Trump wasn't on board with or contradicting, openly contradicting Trump after he says something. It's the same thing. That's the way I read Robin's quote unquote statement that was overheard the other day. None of, nobody wants this. Absolutely nobody wants a 21 month extension of Article 50 other than the EU, if that's the, all they're going to get, if it's not going to be WTO terms. They want that situation because they don't want to negotiate and look weak, but they don't want Brexit either. And to me, it just looks like Theresa May is calling all these people to the mat and forcing them to 
out themselves as to what's their actual motivation. It just seems obvious to me. And even to the point of playing someone who I respect and who I adore, Nigel Farage, saying now he's a member of the of the Brexit party in the EU, uh, in the European Parliament, which is, I'm like, great, exactly. Nigel, continue fire breathing. Continue being a firebrand. And you might not believe it, but it, almost, it looks to me like Theresa May is trying to do your job for you, help you do your job. Not do your job for you, but help you do your job. And that would be the most the strangest occurrence, the strangest outcome of this whole thing. And maybe it's ultimately what May has been trying to do from the beginning, which is to save Britain from the clutches of the EU. Because it's very obvious at this point that they're not interested in treating Britain fairly. Or any of their member states. And a lot has changed in three years since the vote, by the way. A lot of water under the bridge, and a lot of relationships have changed, and a lot of relationships have been revealed. And it's a dangerous thing in any kind of political analysis that you just think everything's as static as it was three years ago. No, this has been change. People respond to different information. And maybe, just maybe, Theresa May has realized just how dangerous the European Union is, and frankly, just how weak it actually is. And why would Britain want to be tied to it intimately forever? Which is why she allowed Ollie Robbins to negotiate a terrible deal. And now is going to run out the clock until we get the WTO exit. We'll see. All right, this has been the Gold, Goats, and Guns short news for February 13th, 2019. If you like what you heard today, please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. Um... I already gave you all, all, your, all the good information up front, so you guys are good. You guys have a great afternoon. Keep your stick on the ice.